My name is Duke Baxter. I'm the CEO of Zone Sports Academy, and I'm from Bridgewater, New Jersey. I started playing the game of baseball at the age of five. It's hard to remember what type of player growing up. I remember being smaller. I remember uh, being a skinny player. I was more of the small ball, the scrappy kind of player, the, the guy that had a pretty good arm, kind of fast, but just a hustler and uh, just loved playing the game. It was interesting because right out of college um, in 97, that's when I played my first year of professional baseball in 97, went back again in 98, was dating forever my wife now. Once ball was over, I was like, man, what, you know, what, what am I gonna do with myself? But I had no clue, no direction, just know, knowing that I loved working out and I loved helping kids get better and, and do that sort of thing. In 2000, I got married. Same thing, started, had a little baseball thing on the side. And in 2001, I met uh, this guy, Ben Fonseca, who was the actual hitting instructor for the Somerset Patriots. He then worked with me in Flemington. And in 2002, he's like, man, you can still play. Like, would you wanna play? Like, we're looking for a utility infielder. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I've been married for two years. Like, I'm, I, I, I'm not sure. So I remember going home that night. We were living in Hoboken and I'm like, uh, babe, uh, I got asked today if I wanted to play professional baseball. She goes, when are you gonna start? So I trained for it and, you know, got myself ready, went to spring training and played 2002 with the Somerset Patriots. That was the year that we started zoned in 2002. And as soon as that season was over, then this is, you know, so for the last 17 years, this has been my home. Yeah. Good. Good. The ball getting here, or it's gonna pop out. Yeah. So when I'm working through, you're stuck in the position that you're in. So I think that owning, you know, owning your business is very difficult because the, you know, the ups and downs are, are kind of all on you. If things go right, good, you know, fine. And then you want to try to give the praise to those that are with you. But then when things go bad, you want to be the one that says, "Oh, this is my fault. Let me fix it." The challenging part is always trying to to keep the culture and to keep the the environment. No one's gonna have the same passion that you have for your own business. And that's where I think people get it twisted because I can't expect this person to love Zone as much as I do. Well, it's not theirs. It's not, there's a different level of, of, of commitment um, but that doesn't mean that they, that they don't love it. It's a bitch. <laughs> oh, oh. You guys are going like this, you're seeing it, and you're kind of dancing out here. Anything that you, that you own makes it difficult because there's a lot of ups and downs. You know, people just see the, oh, you have this, you have that, oh, you have that also. No one knows what you did prior to that. 2002, when there was no turf, and there was no netting, and there were no, you know, they, this isn't what it always, was like, but I think it's the grind. That's that's the fun part. To anywhere anywhere you want to go, you have to do what it takes to to get there. And it's that's what makes you appreciate when things are good. It's like, man, I can overcome anything because I've already I've been through those harder times. Some people want to be leaders and some people don't, and that's fine. You know, a lot of times people want to play shortstop, but they don't have the arm to play shortstop. So if you have an employee that you know, I want to be a manager. Well, you don't just put somebody as a manager and then have them figure it out. It's not about what you say you can do, it's about what you show you can do. I remember playing my, as a sophomore, I remember playing shortstop, and we were up by one run in the last inning, and I remember a routine ground ball comes to me, and I'm getting ready to field it, and the ball goes between my legs. Ball goes between my legs, I get it, I throw it in. He's like, don't worry about it, let's go, let's go. And I was just like, ah. the next kid hits a two run home run. 
walk off, game's over. That was something I really learned from the following year was I gotta do my do the work in the off season to really get myself ready and get myself in a, a different type of mindset to not allow one thing totally deteriorate and you know balance something else off. In life it's the same thing. We're trying to always balance. I think that's one of the big lessons that I learned uh, through playing sports was, you know, time to have fun, time to work, time to train. First, I went to Florida Community College at Jacksonville. It was a junior college in Jacksonville. Went there for two years. Then I went to the University of North Florida. Academics and athletics, super hard to balance for me. Out of high school, my grades were C's. I didn't really put too much time in. All I thought was baseball was gonna take me wherever I wanted to go. So it was no longer, I'm going to school for baseball. I'm going to school for an education while I play baseball. You definitely have to make sure that you, you structure your time and you don't get too lost one way or another. Um, in 1997, I signed with the Madison Black Wolf, which is a team in the Northern League. I played the season in 97, 98, 99, and then in 2002, I played for the Somerset Patriots. Off the field, you know, the very low paying contracts that minor league guys get, I think I got paid $795 for the month. Any given day, you can have the red ticket on your locker that's your released. The guy to your left or the guy to your right was hoping that if you were the starting guy that you got hurt so he would get a chance. Your opportunities are, you know, far and few in between and you're waiting just to get that opportunity. Family life. So growing up as a kid, I remember getting one pair of sneakers a year and always cleaning them. And I just remember just really always taking care of what we had. We didn't have our own helmet. We didn't have our own bat. You know, my, my, my dad worked crazy hours. He was a chef. Monday he was off, and Monday was that day that he would get called in sometimes. So it, it was interesting. We'd all pretend like we were sick on Mondays because my dad was off that day. And so my mom was the stay-at-home mom for the three of us. That was, that was challenging. You know, that was challenging. So my mom was the one that played catch with us. My mom was the one that pitched balls to us. My mom was the one that taught us how to do whatever we did. It was My mom was the one that was teaching us that. But I just remember growing up, uh, you know, we, we played outside all the time. You know, we were outside. I always had a ball and a bat in my hand, and I was just always practicing. I just remember always practicing. Like, where's Dukey's outside? Where's Duke? Like, and I would you just figure out how to figure out ways to play by yourself, you know? I, I agree 100% that with culture and with building a team, that's what wins. We say it all the time in, the, in, in, the, in, in, in sports, and that is, you don't have to like everybody on your team, but when you're between the white lines, you gotta be a team. Understand, why is the team here? What are our goals before the season starts? What, is, what are each individual trying to get better at? So if they're all working on themselves, they're working on getting the team better. I think that my definition of, of discipline is doing what you know you should do when you don't feel like it. So. If I know I'm supposed to go to class, discipline is getting up and going to class. But that's where when you look at the successful people and the people at where they are, it's, well, they do the things that they don't feel like doing. Discipline is always that thing that, that bites us or it helps us. Anytime you think of something that can make somebody's day better and you don't say it is really a negative thing. My daily routine is I wake up at 4.37 in the morning, I have a glass of water, I go straight outside. I go out, I make a right turn. It's almost like a home plate, which is kind of interesting. The first turn I just go up and I'm just pretty much just taking deep breaths and kind of just getting into the, the mindset of, okay, what's my day gonna be? You know, no matter what happened yesterday, yesterday's over. Going through yesterday in your mind, going through what you want today to be, what are the big three, what are your big three things that have to get done today? It's a great way to prepare for your day. It's a great way to energize. I walk up, I make a right turn. I say 10 things that I absolutely loved about the day before. And I think that gratitude is something that just puts you in a total mindset of appreciating thing is because it's so easy in today's society to talk about the bad things that are going on. That I'll make my next right turn. Now I'm just saying all the things that I'm thankful for, then I make my next right turn, and then I call this, this is kind of like my 
my power five and I'll just say five things that, that I am. My job is to, is to empty my bucket with energy and everything I possibly can. Love, serve, and care, I say, and it's just like all the things that I'm gonna need to make today awesome. My biggest dream is just to, to, have, a, to have a legacy of where people, like when I pass away, people are like, man, you know what, he was a good guy. No matter what I touch or what I do or where I go, try to leave it a little bit better than it was when you got there. Helping kids grow mentally and physically, you know, having everybody realize how hard, how hard the game is. When kids are playing the game, let them enjoy the game for the game. You know, to make a mistake that it's still something that they, they enjoy doing. So, that's it. Don't count the days, make the days count.